back to the Buckle Professional Sports Channel on YouTube. Welcome back to Swivel Chair Sports. I'm your host, Zach Zerk Mark Buckle, here on the Ghost Day. Aaron, go and say hi. Hi. All right, please make sure to like and subscribe if you enjoy our content. Other than that, let's go ahead and get into it. So, in this video, we'll be doing another free agent tier list, this time for edge rushers and defensive tackles. Uh, taking a look at uh, which players we think are going to get big paydays from their current teams, settle for a deal they may not like, but we'll be sad. We'll we'll deal with um, from their current teams, get franchise tagged by their current teams, or will they walk from their current teams? But without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it. Here we got our tier list for defensive tackles and edge rushers. Uh, starting with the edge rushers, first guy we'll be taking a look at is the Jacksonville Jaguars, Josh Allen. Uh, what do you think, Aaron? Do you think the uh, the Jags are willing to shell out the money to keep uh, to keep Josh Allen around? Um, they should be. I mean, they're they're can they're they're contenders. I mean, I think last year is kind of a you know fluke. I think they're probably definitely sort of. Um, the favorites going forward next year to uh, to win the division. Um, granted, Houston showed out this year, so I think if they want to kind of compete, uh, they should look to bring him back. Yeah. No, I would agree. I think uh, I think they should be willing to pay Josh Allen. He's uh, one of the best edge rushers in the league, and should get paid like one. So, uh, we talked about this team earlier this week. Uh, Daniel Hunter for the Minnesota Vikings. Um, me personally, I think they'll give him what he wants. Um, you know, they've got a decent little bit of cap space, almost $40 million to work with. I don't think they're going to bring Kirk Cousins back, and assuming they don't, they should have enough cap room to pay Daniel Hunter. Uh, what do you think? Uh... Yeah, I, I would like to see them bring him back. Uh, I just don't know that they'll necessarily have the the cap space. Um, and you know, he's he's kind of he's getting up there in age. I think he's what like twenty nine or something like that. Uh, I had um, it up a second ago. I'm not sure now. Something like that. Late twenties. Uh, yeah, I mean, with, uh, with the old Justin Jefferson situation and then figuring That's out what they're going to do at quarterback, um, I think they're kind of in a tough spot. I think they might have to let him walk. Okay. Hmm. Got Jonathan Greener. Actually, you know what? Do you want to just go, like, back and forth? Like, you take one, I'll take one. I mean, you can put him in extend. I, I would like to see them extend him. Yeah. Uh, next we got Jonathan Greenard from the Texans. What do you think about him? Um. Yeah, I think they've got you know. Uh, something something brewing there in Houston on the the defensive side. I think I think he'd be a good guy to to bring back. Yeah, I would assume they should have enough cap space. I'm not exactly sure what their cap situation is, but um, I can't imagine they're paying too many guys too awful big money if, uh, you know, they got a rookie quarterback, really young receivers around him, uh, and it looks like they should be working with about, yeah, $70 million in cap room. So, yeah, I would assume they, they bring Greener back. Uh, Bryce Huff from the Jets. Uh, obviously they've had a couple big cap hits the last couple seasons, bringing in Aaron Rodgers and all of his merry, merry friends. Um, what do you kind of think of Bryce Huff? Uh, obviously their defense wasn't really the problem last year. It was their astounding lack of offense without Aaron Rodgers out there on the field. Um, he's young, he's going into, I think his fourth or fifth season. So, um, I think they should look to bring him back if they can. Yeah. It looks like they'll be working with about 22 million in cap room. So it'll be tough. Um, I just, 
I'd imagine Aaron Rodgers is going to convince the front office to go get other guys that he deems more important. So, in my in my opinion, I think I think Bryce Huff may be out the door. Unfortunately, just because I don't think they'll have the money. Um, next we got Brian Burns. Carolina needs all the help they can get. He's one of the, at least he used to be one of the best edge rushers in the league. Maybe he's kind of fallen down the list a little bit, but still really solid. Um, I think they'll end up working out a deal. Don't know if it'll be the big payday he's looking for, um, but I think they'll stick around in Carolina. I think he ends up settling. Uh, yeah, he's kind of been trade talk uh, around the last two uh, trade deadlines. Um, so I could see him uh, settling. I could also see maybe them doing a, a full-on sign sign and trade, like a tag uh, and trade him, thing. Him, yeah, yeah, or you know, a big contract and and sending him somewhere. Yeah, um, he's probably worth the big contract. I I think he's worth the big contract. Yeah, I don't think Carolina's really in a Position to turn away talent. Yeah. Yeah, I would agree. Um, I think I just really want to start filling up these gaps right here because it's so empty. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Chase Young, really interesting case. I've been saying this whole time, I don't think he's coming back to San Francisco. Don't think San Francisco think can, can afford, afford him. him. Yeah, I don't think they can afford him. And I don't think he really, as well as he played in the Super Bowl, I don't think he meshed as well as everyone hoped he would there in, there in San Francisco. So um, I think between all the pieces they have to pick between to bring back, Chase Young is probably going to not make it back to the Niners. So. Uh, next we've got Jadavion Clowney little bit of a fall from grace ever since you know that highlight hit back at south carolina uh, came into the league for the browns played really well and then ended up struggling to find a contract with them and ended up signing with the ravens on i believe it was a one-year deal if i'm not mistaken um he went to seattle first oh he went to seattle first i forgot about that um but and then i think he signed with the ravens on a one-year deal uh, and kind of rejuvenate his career a little bit there with that 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 really good defense. I think he's kind of in the similar boat as like Chase Young though. I don't know if they'll have the money to bring him back. Um, and I don't think he's going to be with all the all the guys they need to focus on bringing back to you know kind of stay stay competitive next year. I don't know if he's going to be at the top of the list of priorities. I think he's not. Uh, a young buck anymore. No, you know I think he he can kind of settle into his role, um, and kind of settle for you know a, a mid range, um, you know contract that's kind of you know just something to to keep him there and and play for the uh, a contender. You know I think he's probably yeah. kind of looking towards getting a getting that Super Bowl ring and and that part of his career yeah fair point uh next we got josh uchi uche from the new england patriots uh don't know a lot about him if i'm being honest i haven't watched a whole lot of patriots football since tom brady left um do you know anything about about uche what, what are your thoughts there i mean he was he was fine i this the the patriots are kind of you know a weird uh, spot obviously Mayo taking over that's you know kind of a new regime not a not a guy that they brought in so maybe you look to to sort of build their own roster um yeah. still can't believe that I could see him settling I guess uh, yeah I'm not I'm not really sure yeah I still can't believe they gave the head coaching job to OJ Mayo when I mean, he got suspended again from their the, defense he got suspended from the NBA <laughs> again their their defense the patriots defense wasn't the problem this year so i think if they can yeah kind of keep that defensive core together then that'd probably be a good thing um next we got andrew van ginkle uh, i believe he was injured for the playoff game against the chiefs this year Either that or he was the only defensive end that was not injured 
for the Dolphins against the Chiefs in the playoffs. Um, been known to be a pretty decent edge rusher. I believe he did. He originally come from New England, or am I making that up? He seems like a New England um, guy. No, I think he's been in Miami his entire career. Seems like a New England guy with a name like Van Ginkle. You but, say he's a New England guy because he's white. But uh, <laughs> what? What do you what do you think about Van Ginkle here? Him and his his beautiful long flowing blonde locks. Where are the okay. dolphins in this? They need edge rusher help. Oh, actually, they they're... are minus twenty eight and a half. Oh, um... I'll go ahead and put him in walk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah probably gone buddy uh, which that doesn't spell good I, for this other dolphins guy we got way down the line. yeah i mean i would love for them to to bring him back that that defense especially that defensive line was really good when they were all healthy um yeah i think i think he's he walks yeah not a great sign that your team is that far under the under the cap, and and I'm sorry, I was actually mistaken. Over. There's not just this Dolphins guy. There's also this Dolphins guy. So uh, we got some issues there in Miami Bruins <laughs> cap space. <laughs> cap space wise. Um, next, we got Leonard Floyd for the Buffalo Bills, who honestly, similar to the Dolphins, Bills are not not in friendly territory when it comes to cap space. So uh, I I also think... thirty two out of thirty two. <laughs> I also think he's probably uh, out, out, out the door. Yeah, yeah, which sucks because they're probably gonna have to let Von Miller go, so they're gonna have to find some sort of answer. That yeah, they're gonna have cheap to answer for edge rusher. Yeah, Leonard Floyd's probably gonna have to walk because you can't pay him. You, you, as a Bills fan, I would imagine you're hoping you can trade Von Miller. So at that point, I don't know who you have rushing the quarterback, but you're gonna have to find some sort of either draft a guy or find a cheap option on the market, but, um, Zadarius Smith from the Browns, kind of a fall from grace since leaving, was it Minnesota, or was it Green Bay where he was really nice, you know, he played for both, I can't remember which one he was a dog for, but, uh, uh I think it was Green Bay, I believe, and he was just, I think he was just, like, decent in Green Bay, yeah, one of the two, um, it was either that or vice versa, but, um, yeah, a little bit of a fall from grace since coming to Cleveland. Not awful, but just not the game wrecker that he used to be. Um, and I think we, we looked at the Browns cap space last week, and I think we said that there's probably no way that they're going to be able to bring him back. Is that, is that what we kind of agreed minus on? Minus 12. Yeah. Minus 13, essentially. Yeah, with the Deshaun Watson contract eating up so much space, I think we kind of came to the conclusion that Zadarius Smith's probably out the door. Um, next we've got Dorrance Armstrong from the Cowboys. Um, recently Jerry Jones said they were going all out to win the Super Bowl. Um, I would assume they've been probably doing that ever since he took over office, but I could be wrong. Um, <laughs> you know, you got Micah, uh, Parsons on the other side, so not a huge loss if you do end up losing him. What do you think of, what do you think of Dorrance? They still got Lawrence too, right? Dexter Lawrence, I believe, yeah. Demarcus Lawrence. Dem that too, that guy. Dexter Lawrence, I think, <laughs> played for the Giants. I don't know. I don't, he may not even be real. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, I. One thing you got to keep in mind: new D coordinator. Yeah. Um, Dan Quinn gone. So, again, maybe looking to find his own guys there but um obviously with kind of the the few game exceptions especially that one against the packers um defense played really well last year yeah um i think he's probably looking to be maybe more of a depth guy um but so i could i could see him settling but I don't think the Cowboys are in too great calf space either. No. no. Speaking of teams with uh, not minus great... Minus Yeah. Speaking of teams with not great calf space, we've got the Eagles with Brandon Graham. 
Um, Captain, you know, long time piece of that Eagles front five, front seven. Um, but he is, I think, on the older side, if I'm not mistaken. So with the oh, yeah. with the Eagles, I would assume looking to get younger. I would imagine he's gone. Yeah, I would probably imagine that as well. I mean, they're they're not terrible. They've got like fifteen million in cap. Um, I could see him maybe you know coming back being that veteran locker room guy. And I mean, he didn't really put up all all the stats that he used to last year. So he's, yeah. he's definitely kind of on the the downward turn of his career. Um, I don't know that he's really gonna get a big contract anywhere else. So I could see him just, you know, kind of staying there in, in Philly and um, trying to will that team to another Super Bowl. Yeah. We'll say he sticks around and has like a Jason Kelsey type um, role on the, on the offense well, or on the defensive side. Jason Kelsey still. Yeah. He's still all pro. Yeah. He's still, <laughs> still arguably the best center in the league. Fair enough. Fair <laughs> enough. Okay. Uh, Next, we'll go, we'll go with the two Chiefs players together since they're right here next to each other. We got Mike Dana, edge rusher, and then we got Chris Jones, obviously, one of the best T tackles in the league. Um, I'll tell you right now, this is probably how it's going to go, uh, or at least have to go. If, if we want this, it probably means this. Yeah, and I mean, Dana was good in the first half of the season, but once Omenahu you know, came back from his suspension. Dana was kind of MIA. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> had flashes, but yeah. So, I, I like I like keeping, I mean, obviously, I mean, he's going to be here for the next, I don't know, a couple years, whatever his contract is. Right. Um, but he's back next year. Um, and I think if we're going to look to bring back Chris Jones and hopefully uh, Snead as well, Dana's going to have to walk. Yeah, and that's what it's all signs are pointing to the Chiefs trying to figure out a contract with Chris Jones uh, and then probably at least tagging Snead, if not trying to do the same with him. So uh, it'll be interesting, but in order to get both those two guys back, which we'll talk about Snead in another video, um, Dane is probably going to have to go, which is unfortunate, but oh well, it is what it is. Um, next we've got, shoot, this will cooperate, Justin Matabuke. Another Baltimore Raven. Um, one of the other, again, one of the best D tackles in the league, probably. Uh, really good run stopper as well as, as, as getting pressure on the quarterback. Um, I kind of would consider him Baltimore's top priority this offseason. He's probably their best free agent that they have. Must have yeah. game record type player. Yeah, they, they have to bring him back at all costs. Uh, I'd imagine he's their number one priority, even above like Patrick Queen and all the other guys. Um, Matabuke is probably the the guy they're they're locked in on bringing back. So they're gonna be willing to shell out the money for him. Next we got Christian Wilkins, another Dolphin. Uh, also really good D tackle. Uh, we got a got a few solid D tackles here in free agency this year. Um, Dolphins though not not looking great on the cap front. I I would think they want to give him the money he deserves, uh, and they're probably going to try to do whatever they need to to do so, especially if they lose Van Ginkle. Um, however, if they do that, we'll go ahead and skip down to him real quick. Probably means Raekwon Davis is gone. Yeah, I I agree. I mean Wilkins, he's you know. Stuff's the middle of that line. He, he's good in pass rush. Yeah. Um, he's smart. I don't know how many times I've seen him, you know, bat down screens or, or something of the like. So I, I think he's, you know, kind of, again, on that tier of must-have interior D linemen. Yeah. I've got to bring him back. Yep. I would agree. Interior pressure is probably one of the most important aspects of a defense this at this point in, you know, the evolution of football. So, uh Next, we got Danico Autry again. I mean, we've got, we're just going down the list of like solid defensive tackles now. Um, <laughs> pretty solid guy out of, out of Tennessee. Um, they are projected to have a lot of cap space this offseason, I believe. 
Um, I could be mistaken, but I don't think they have really any big big contracts that they're having to pay because they get rid of everybody before they're able to, you know, hit that payday. I know Ryan Tannehill is probably a big deep, big contract. I don't know if he's expired, um, but if not, that's like your only like massive one that you know your big eyesore. So I think they give Denico Autry what he wants. Yeah, the, the Titans are sitting at the number two as far as <laughs> in terms of cap space. They've got like 80 yeah. <laughs> and a half million. It's like the commanders of uh, them, right? Uh, Something like that. I I think it kind of comes down to whether or not they want to go in full rebuild mode. Yeah. Um, he, Autry's not, not a spring chicken. Um, uh Maybe they look to tag and trade to re-sign him, but I wouldn't. I wouldn't be. Yeah, I was thinking maybe tag him, but is he worth that? I don't know. See, I don't think he's a top five D tackle, so I don't know if they'd be willing to give him that money. Mm -hmm. Because I mean, I think you're looking at three right here better than him. You got Aaron Donald definitely Uh better than him. So there's four already. I don't think he's number five. Because you also got like Jalen Carter over in Philadelphia. Yeah, and, and Will Anderson down in uh, Houston. I mean, they've got the cap space. That's what I'm thinking. That's the only reason I could see them tagging him is because yeah. they do have the cap space to do so. But I don't know. We'll say tag him for now. Next, we got DJ Reader. Uh, I talked about it in a video earlier this week. Um, a guy that you would assume they've got the cap room to do. You'd assume they bring him back. Uh, if they, if they're able to do it, why not? And they seem like they're able to do it because they tagged T Higgins, so he's obviously not going to be able to fall into this category. <laughs> um, and then they still have over at least assuming that. Spotrack accounts for T. Higgins franchise tag number. They still have fifty million dollars in cap room, so I'd imagine DJ Reader gets gets his bag. Yep. Um. Next we got da, 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 Maurice Hurst from Cleveland Browns. They have no cap room. Yeah, I mean we're down to you know these these D tackles. Um, they're tough because their their stats don't really show all that they do. Right. Um. Yeah, they they don't really have a lot of cap, so. <laughs> yeah. I think he's he's kind of gone. I think Leonard Williams gets. I think he sticks with Seattle. I don't think he's getting what you would consider a big payday. Um, but I don't see any reason for Seattle really. Moving on, other than I guess he's kind of on the older side, though, isn't he? So maybe that'd be a reason to move on from him. Um. Yeah, I mean, drafted in 2015. Uh. Yeah, I mean, I think he, he hasn't really... He's not one of those, like, game-breaker guys. No. So I could see him selling for... Yeah, he's... About to hit thirty, so yeah, I, I don't I don't think he's gonna get a big payday by any means. Um, next got Sheldon Rankins. Unless he wants to go ring chasing, then he might then he might, might just walk somewhere. Yeah, <laughs> that is true. Uh, next we got Sheldon Rankins. I mean, Houston's got the money to bring him back. I don't know exactly what a big payday would would mean for him, but they'll probably just give him money because they can, and he's he's pretty solid, from what I understand. Yeah. Uh, Grover Stewart for Indianapolis. Don't know anything about him. <laughs> um, again, tough, tough to say for these these D yeah. tackle guys. Um, let's see where are they? I don't think the Colts have tons of cap room. They don't have bad cap room, but you got to think they ought to focus on bringing back Pittman, um, and then potentially building around that offense. The Colts to... have sixty-six million in cap space. Okay, so they do have a lot of cap room. Um, 
I don't know how much of that's going to go to Pittman, though. You'd assume at least around probably, what, like $20 million of it's going to Pittman? And then... Yeah, they'll bring him back. He's fine. Okay, we'll put him at Sellers. Yeah. <laughs> Daquan Jones for the Bills. Probably gone. Yeah. No, no cap space. Pierre Tart for the Titans. I mean, I guess they'll they'll bring him back. Kind of the same as Grover Stewart. They've got the cap room, so we'll just put him there. Uh, Fletcher Cox for the Philadelphia Eagles. Possibly the biggest Again. question mark for the for the for same the sort of situation as Brandon Graham. You know. Yeah, but I think he's gonna ask for more money than Brandon. In which case, I think Fletcher Cox. Is yeah, winning. it's a sad day for Philadelphia fans because they may lose both Jason Kelsey and Fletcher Cox in the same off season. Um, but unfortunately, you know the sands of time continue to tick on, and uh, you know, Father Time's undefeated. So unfortunately, it just is what it is, and you'll be okay. You'll be okay, Philadelphia. You won't be the Chiefs in the Super Bowl, but you'll be okay. Uh, next we got Calais Campbell, another old, older guy. This guy's got to be like <laughs> in his forties by now. I mean, Jesus, and he's on like his fifth team, I think, with with Atlanta. Whoops. Um, played for the Jacksonville Jaguars, the Baltimore Ravens. I think with the, with the Texans at one point, maybe. I don't know. It feels like he's played for everybody. But I think yeah. he's I think he's gone. I don't think he really had much of an impact for Atlanta. Um, they might bring him back for the vibes, but I, I just I at his age I don't see them any reason to. New new regime too. Yeah. yeah. Uh next we have Quentin Jefferson from the Jets. Uh, I I'd assume I mean they're they're fine at D tackle. They've got yeah, what's his fine. fate, Quinn and Williams. They're fine. They don't need Jefferson. They're okay. Um, Javon Kinlaw, another Niner. I can't remember what we said in our Niners off season video. I think we said that they would pay him, right? They'd be willing to bring him back. I mean, obviously they want to. Um... But can they? Is the question? Yeah, can they? If they can, I could see them doing it. And then, last but not least, we've got Shelby Harris. <laughs> I don't think he played a whole lot this year, so I would just assume he's probably <laughs> gone. Uh,. <laughs> Let me look him up just to make sure, and I'm not disrespect. I don't, I don't want to disrespect him, but I couldn't find a whole lot of game footage or game pictures, so I would just assume he's he probably didn't play a ton. Uh, do, 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 do. He played. No, he played 17 games, but he only started seven. So yeah, he's not like a vital piece of that defense from the looks of it. Yeah. So, but uh, unless you got anything else, Aaron, I think uh, that'll do it for this episode of the most unprofessional sports channel on YouTube. So, Chair Sports, I've been your host, Zach Sherbrooke Burkle, here at the coast today. Aaron, go and say bye, Aaron. Bye. All right, please be sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this. Other than that, deuces.